And welcome back to Take It to the Hill. And if you're wondering why John suddenly sounds so sexy, it's actually Rohan speaking right now. Um, anyway, so I visited the visited the college Republicans last week, and um, it was very interesting what I saw. Um, the um, college Republicans they were debating about ISIS, and I really thought it was interesting that everybody was getting involved in the topic. Everybody had different opinions on it. So um, we're gonna kind of do something like that right here. We're gonna talk um, to the college Republicans and talk about their opinions um actually some breaking news um uh i think uh from cnn i saw it like about an hour ago before the show started um i think the u.s has start uh, has commenced the airstrikes in um i think syria either mm-hmm. syria or iraq well they started um the airstrikes syria, syria mm-hmm. yeah against isis so anyway what do you guys think about that um you want to go first? I mean, I have my own perspective, military guy. So, I mean. well, I didn't read. I just saw the headlines for attacking Syria, or at least bombing uh, ISIS targets in Syria. Um, as far as the bombing campaign altogether, my opinion of that is we should do a lot of. I mean, I, I agree with the bombing campaign against ISIS positions. I think they should be done in coordination with Kurdish ground offensives. And I think mm-hmm. that's the best way. For example, you saw a couple of weeks ago with the, the dam. Was it in Mosul? In uh, Mosul, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the Kurdish forces took over the dam and kind of uh, regained a, a big position in that area. But it was also in coordination with U.S. airstrikes. Uh, for some of the viewers who might not know as much about the Kurds like me, could you explain more <laughs> about who they are and um, if they're an enemy or an ally? Yeah, yeah me, well, me and John can both chime in about this. Okay. Well, uh, what people need to know about the Kurds is uh, they long time ago, uh, they used to have their own region in the Arabic world called mm-hmm. Kurdistan. And they are an ethnic – sorry, an ethnic and a uh, a secular group of, of Muslims. They um, mm-hmm. uh, Many Kurds I've talked to – uh, reject Sharia law. They don't believe in a you know a theocratic state, but most importantly too, they've been real helpful to U.S. interests over there. And they've been what what can I say? I mean, they've been more than reputable friends, and they've always uh, been there to help. And uh, the Kurds, um, w- one one thing we hope to see from this conflict, and, and this is just like a personal thing I'd like to see in foreign policy, is that we see a reestablishment of Kurdistan because. They're, they've been a minority group in every country that mm-hmm. was broken off following Versailles. You see in Iraq, Syria, right. um, southern Turkey, and they've been they've been oppressed. So we're hoping to see after we take care of ISIS. And don't get me wrong, like you know, it's just like I don't think we can. Uh, there's no, you, you can't kill ISIS enough, but it's just the political reality of going us putting boots on the ground is impossible. I mean, it's right. just you can't really arm the Syrians um, because I think Dennis well, wanted to yeah, chime absolutely. in real quick. Yeah, John, I think. Helping establish an independent and united Kurdistan is beneficial for its own sake, but that doesn't exactly kill ISIS either. If we're not going to put uh, boots on the ground, we need an army to support which can take and hold the territory currently controlled by ISIS. And none of the Kurdish militias, none of the Shiite militias are going to do that. Uh, Where do we get an army that can take and hold uh, Sunni Arab territory. Well, see, I dis uh, I disagree with that uh, personally because see, the Kurds have been most effective fighting force. They haven't turned on us. They're not arming. You know, we arm the Syrian uh, Liberation Army, I believe SFAL. I can't remember, but uh, you know, we arm the Syrians. Most of these guys end up arming ISIS. They mm-hmm. are killing their own ethnic groups. The Kurds, they're a, you know that they're not a group. They are a they're an ethnic people. Right. They are religious people, and they we they have clear beliefs. You're either a Kurd or you're not. Versus they, if you're a you know a freedom fighter mm-hmm. in another country, there's no clear cut beliefs you have. So that's why we need to have a uniform well, code of belief in the people we arm. I would say that the Kurds only have a limited amount of operating space. I mean, they can only operate in that region of the country. I mean, they can't operate in Syria, of course. They can operate in southern Iraq. And, uh, you know, the, the Iraqi government is not going to do anything. And we have to be really careful about arming these different rebel groups through Iraq and Syria because you don't, you don't, we don't know a whole lot about these groups. Or, you know, if we funnel and pump money into some of these, like we just passed the bill in the Senate that uh, funded military weapons to this Syrian rebel group, well, what are the chances of those weapons ending up in the hands of ISIS? Um, so, like I said, the Kurds... Well, using the Kurds as a defense 
will only take you so far because, like I said, they only have a limited range. But I think Dennis wanted to. Well, I would agree with that. I don't think the Kurds want, say, Mosul. It's a Sunni Arab city, and the Iraqi central government, which is at this point a Shiite secular uh, sectarian group, they can't hold Mosul. So who is going to remove ISIS? Well, I mean, then maybe we should ask this question. Why don't we work with governments that have been denouncing ISIS? Because that's, that's what I've been seeing a lot. People expect us to solve the problem, which is fair because us withdrawing allowed them to rise to power. But that being said, however, we see a lot of Islamic countries denouncing ISIS. I don't see a lot of these places who are saying, you know, uh, it, you know what they're saying is haram, what they're saying is uh, evil, you know, and it is anti-Islamic what ISIS is. And I agree with it. ISIS is not Islamic. They are a terrorist cult. And it could, you know, but at the same time, I'm not seeing those governments who are denouncing them taking much action. action. So maybe we should sit down with, you know, more uh, Western countries like the UAE, uh, maybe not even Saudi Arabia, but Saudi Arabia, them being mm-hmm. Sunni, have passionate hatred for ISIS. So we should talk with these governments, these power players in the region, and discuss a way to for them to remove them. Because, like I said, if we arm, keep arming rebel groups – just new, a new snake is going to rise mm. when we kill them. You know this one. I just it's, I just don't see other Arab countries getting super involved. I mean, you look at a lot of the U.S. intervention in the in the Middle East in the last twenty thirty years. The United States and Western countries like France and Britain, and you know mostly the United States have taken the lead in a lot of these operations. And yes, other Arab states in that region have taken. They've taken initiative, but they haven't taken initiative like other countries. So even if we did sit down with uh, the UAE or um, Saudi, yeah, Saudi Arabia, which Saudi Arabia uh, maybe you know they're uh, maybe we don't want to ally ourselves too close with Saudi Arabia. I know they're they're friends with us in the region, but uh, we have to be really careful who we help out. And I don't think Saudi Arabia is going to honestly do a whole lot, even if we did sit down with them. And we definitely don't want Iran doing anything. No. Um, uh, that's the. Oh, go ahead, Dennis. Oh, James, I'd like to take off on that point mm-hmm. because uh, ISIS is surrounded on two sides by Iran and its uh, proxy states in Baghdad and um, Syria. We also don't want to see a world where ISIS is destroyed, but we have a contiguous Iranian sphere of influence from Afghanistan to the Mediterranean. That would be bad for the United States. It would be also horrible for Israel, which faces the threat of an Iranian nuclear weapon. Uh, Could I actually um, bring up something? Um, I like how you brought up Israel. I was actually going to say something about Mm -hmm. that. Um, What do you guys think about, like, Israel's role in this um – do you think they they can be like an ally, or do you think they're already you know already encumbered with their own wars to get involved with fighting ISIS? I think um, I think that I mean they're absolutely an ally of the U.S. Yeah. in the region. I think under this administration, they've become more disenfranchised with the United States. Unfortunately, with the way we've kind of the Western powers have kind of treated Israel, um, so we're going to have to rebuild our relationship with them over the. You know, maybe if a Republican gets elected in the next administration, maybe we can rebuild our our close ally uh, relationship with Israel. Um, but I, well, I mean, I can, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Netanyahu administration over it's still Netanyahu, correct? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, so, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, well, because I mean, I know, I know the Knesset has you know unanimously put out statements saying that you know we are not going to you know support U.S. wars because they're not helping us support. Because, I mean, they have their own issues in mm-hmm. Palestine, especially, you know, the, the yeah. Gaza Strip. It's, it, it's, it's a rough mess over there, and I'm not here to comment on that because I really have no place to. But uh, I'm just seeing what I'm seeing, and it's, you know, I don't – I can't expect Israeli the mm-hmm. IDF to come out and help fight a, yeah. you know, Islamic mm-hmm. radical group that has no really – uh, influence in their region, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could, but if ISIS grew, they potentially could. Um, 
But like I said, we need to build our relationship with Israel before we can start getting involved with war. And I mean, if you, if you see Israeli mm. foreign policy, they're they're gen- they're always reactionary. They're not going to. Right. They don't take any. They're not going to preemptive. Bol- you know, they're not going to do a preemptive strike. You know, and I mean, I guess a better question I, I guess I have for you, Rohan, is mm-hmm. you know the four point plan that the Obama administration has already been put in place. So. Really, I mean, we can speculate what we should do, what some college students should do, but <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, what what effects do we do you think we're going to see from this plan? Um, well, to be honest, um, so basically the plan is like airstrikes, um, send support, like via like you know our troops, but not actually like no combat mission, right? Yeah, no, it's it's a. Yeah. Uh, supervising role but yeah, yeah i mean even but i'm saying it's, it's funny now because there's really no concept of how this right. war is being fought because i mean all the military professionals that spoke before congress said the only way this mission can be successful is with boots on the ground and i agree with dennis but it's just you know looking at it from an economic perspective right. now we mm-hmm. withdrew everything now it's the cost of reestablishing our reestablishing ourselves and i can tell you firsthand i mean the fiscal year doesn't start again to october and the army is out of money that doesn't mean we necessarily support boots on the ground either. It means we're saying there's a choice between putting boots on the ground and accepting a world which has the Islamic State on the map. Right. Well, I, I mean, I think any rational person would say, you know, I mean, the Islamic State is not a viable option because, I mean, you're seeing what these people are doing. You can't let this well, serious influence now. grow. But I mean, it's, they exist. Right. I, well, I have no doubt. The question we're looking down the road, though, if we yeah. don't intervene, what's going to happen later on? Um, if, Actually, um, could oh, I uh, build yeah, up absolutely. on that? Absolutely. Um, personally, um, I might, you know, be a little different from other liberals. I mean, like like we discussed before, foreign policy is such like you know, it, it's a very dividing issue between conservatives and liberals. But um, personally, I believe. I think ISIS wins when they instill fear on us. I mean, that's why they're called terrorists. Mm-hmm. So, I think a lot of a lot of the, the, one of the biggest issues is the media talks about keeps talking about ISIS and how terrible they are. But I mean, mm-hmm. who are they compared to the United States of America? I mean, they have not attacked us yet. I right. don't think they will attack us. Um, I think um, we should definitely support our allies in the Middle mm-hmm. East. But I don't think we should send our own troops there. I don't think we should be sacrificing our sons and daughters for an enemy I don't think that is right. a real big threat to us. I think a lot of it is they're scaring us, and that's why right. they win, because they're terrorists, right? Well, and I, I definitely see that to a point, but, you know, Rohan is just – I mean, it's funny. I shared an article the other day about mm-hmm. – um, uh, about how ISIS, the ISIS propaganda machine, they're encouraging radicalized um, Muslims to go into American homes and kill sh- soldiers. This was mm-hmm. confirmed by Breitbart and the Daily Mail, and uh, – I mean, I accept that this isn't a probable thing that's going to happen. It's probably mm-hmm. not going to happen. But the fact of the matter is there is an established state with a government and that's true. a this military true. force that yeah. is having this dialogue. This is their yeah. foreign policy towards the United yeah. States. Right. And do they do, do they, are they against any American interests now? No. But point is you let these people – you know, I mean, that's because that's how I were with the Nazis. These, this is a fascist group. Yeah. We let the Nazis, you know, grow to, to, you know, into a large sphere of influence. And ISIS is just that. That's what we potentially see on a rise is a big – we could have a very big problem in the future. There's also a moral humanitarian point that has to be made here, which is that ISIS is massacring Christian minorities. It's massacring Shiites. It's killing children. You can make a case for intervention, whether you buy that or not, on purely humanitarian grounds. Okay, I just want to say one thing real quick, and I'll let you guys have your final thoughts because um, we're running out of time. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, there is definitely a humanitarian crisis going on there. Um, I think when it comes to crises like this, I think the international state should be more involved. Like I think other countries like the U.K., France, they should be more involved like as much as America. But that's my personal opinion. I'm just a junior government major, so what do I know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, final thoughts. What do you guys think? Is this final thoughts altogether on the show? Yeah, uh, okay. no, no, no. Or just on, on ISIS. Topic. Just ISIS, just ISIS. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I think I, I think it's too early to decide for me. I definitely think airstrikes are necessary in coordination with uh, Kurdish forces, and I think we should – I don't necessarily think we should be giving weapons to groups that we, we're not sure. So I think we should be giving weapons to – people like the Kurds but not the Syrian rebels because honestly we don't know who they are Uh, but other than that I think we should if we are to put boots on the ground personally I think we should do it in limited numbers with maybe special forces and doing like spec ops missions uh, to take out their key leaders because I mean you got to cut the head off the snake so that's uh, but like I said once it develops 
more I can form a better opinion, but go ahead, John. Um, I think it's important all around just to clarify that this is a terror state. This is not uh, general Islam. Islam has denounced that. But that being said, I think we need to start pursuing a plan with other Islamic countries to put an end to, you know, this terror state that is, you know, the Islamic state, you know, ironically named. Um, And we have to, as Americans, you know, make this distinction, you know, uh, bet- between the two, and we have to say one is not the other because that's a problem we see in a lot of uh, conservative media, and we do have to put a, you know, an end, a definitive end to ISIS while still, you know, supporting our interests in the region and, you know, uh, just being the awesome country we are. <laughs> we need to su- continue supporting the Kurds for a number of reasons, and find an Arab ally in the Middle East that can take and hold the territory controlled by ISIS. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Wait, wait. On can I show. say one, one, one last thing? Yeah, Sorry. You said you one, 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 really one more last that. thing. Really <laughs> anyway, um, I just I just wanted to build up on one of the thing you brought up, John. Um, these guys are not Islam. Like they do not represent Islam as a whole. Said that. Most, most, most. I just wanted to reiterate. Right. So I have clarity. Do you get what <laughs> I, I mean? Clarity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's and why we need to name yeah. our show one last thing. Yeah, yeah. But and uh, uh, just to say one more thing, uh, college <laughs> Republicans meet Tuesday nights in Enterprise right, 318, right. Mm-hmm. 730. It's an awesome time. Say that one more time, the location and the time. Uh, Enterprise Hall 318, room 318 at 730. We'll be there. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. We'll be having right. a good time. And, and like mm-hmm. us on Facebook also. There you go. Yeah, give us a like on Facebook. Mm-hmm. We put all our events on there. And contact us if you want to be on our newsletter. We send them. How do we reach you on Facebook? Like, what, what's the name of the? Um, it's just GMU College Republicans. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming <laughs> on the show. Uh, they may or may not stay for the next half hour, depending on how.